This is a special one for obvious reasons. <laughs> Isn't it great when you suddenly figure out in your life where things start to fit? Yeah. And it might take, it takes some people two years. It, it takes take some a people lifetime. five years. It, it takes a lifetime. a lifetime. But when everything starts to align, I yeah. think the beauty of it is you you reminisce of the times when things didn't align. And yeah, the, the, you be kind to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And then that difference, you, you appreciate. You appreciate the old times too, but then you appreciate what you got going on now, like. You've got a lot going on right now, man. I just mm. want to say heartfelt congratulations on the incredible good news to you Thank and your you. better half, man. Yes, 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 yes. Double. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Double trouble. I know. you got to get a bigger car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Multiple. You know, they say, uh, we got two. And, uh, w you know, whenever my friends had a third or a fourth, they were like, oh, man, we got to get a six-seater now. <laughs> <laughs> get a bus. Yeah. No, it's great news, man. Congratulations. So, so much to celebrate. So much to talk about in your life. Um, I'm glad we're getting a chance to do it at this point. You know, um, we was been meant to do. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But I mean, to do it now at a point where um, you're having your most amount of success and yeah. you're starting to turn that attention and back toward things that you can actually focus on now that you maybe couldn't have before. Definitely, you know, I'm definitely in a different like space. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? I think to to attain this this level it takes a lot of concentration as well. Over the years, you know, music music is fun to me. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty of it for me. Like, the way I, I, I fell into, you know, being a, an artist. It was kind of, I don't want to say a mistake, but um, it was just, I was just called to be an artist. I started off as a producer, engineer. I wanted to be behind the scenes, you know, for, you know, various reasons. Um, I was still in school. And that was the priority. Yeah, that was definitely the priority. I know that because I know your family background. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I just kept on because what I do is I be in the studio and then, you know, I was very good at picking music. I don't know why. It was just I just had the ear. Taste is crucial. Very good at picking music, picking beats, picking melodies. And then, you know, from there, you know, we just kept going and kept going and boom. Yeah, but the voice is something else. It's one thing to have taste. Look, there are great artists out there who've used their ability to pick the right things mm -hmm. mixed with ambition and focus. And the voice almost f catches up to all of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like some of my favorite artists aren't technically the greatest singers. Of course. But their voice had purpose. Yeah. Y you have an incredible tone, an incredible yeah. voice. My, my family uh, voice is hoarse. Like we all have yeah. the same like. Bah, bah, bah. So when I... um. You know, when I just start recording, every time I just get into that mood of recording, you know, it switches up and it has this like, because I'm an engineer. So when I'm mixing my vocals, yeah, like if somebody brings a record to me, like even if I don't write this record, if somebody brings a record to me mm. and then I hear it, mm. I just smile. Like if they want me to do mm. it and obviously, ah, David, ah, I'm with David, that your voice, that mm. your voice. So when they bring it, I already know like, yo, if I do this, it's going to be a smash. And then, you know, a lot of records that I've done, that's been, you know, co-written for me. When you hear the demos, then you hear, you know, the final ones. Yeah. Like, All right, yes. But that's why you're special. That's why when I, I hear your music and millions of people do, I'm glad you brought to the surface the observation that you're a producer and an engineer first. Yes. Because the detail and the way things sound, it's clear that you're not leaving that to somebody else, that you that you're a part of that process all the way through. Yeah, because like when I make music, I'm already thinking, okay, how how's the EQ going to be on the hi-hat? Yeah. How's everything going to sound? I'm really, really big on, I do like five, six mixes yeah. per record. Whereas uh, an artist just, you know, leaves all that to the producer. I'm yeah. in the studio. Yeah with the producer, we're going back and forth. Even if I'm not physically there, we on WhatsApp, we talking like, yo, this doesn't sound right, blah, blah, blah. I'll call my friend up, I'm like, yo. Get down there. Um, I, I, My friends that own a lounge or whatever, like, yo, empty the club, yep. or give me a room in the club, I'm coming. And I'll just play the album, we just play. play road test, play. road test, road test, check it out, and check then, it out, get different experiences, different. What about in the car? I'm like, you know, different cars is different. Like, mm. and I like, like, especially like, I like sports cars. I don't think sports cars have like the best. <laughs> the best sound I got a great story I, I, it's never been confirmed to me but I'm gonna share it anyway I heard that Eminem when he's making his albums mm -hmm. has his old car that he still has with the sound system in it shipped to wherever he needs to be wow. at mix time so that when he plays it back on a CD 
and he, he trusts that sound system more than any other sound system in the world. That's his final sign off is when he puts it through his old his beat up old car. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Me, I be sometimes I like like phone speakers. Yeah. Like after the mix, after yeah. everything's mixed, I'll be like, all right. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get the biggest kick out of hearing demos or whatever through that because it's something about the compression and the way it is. I know it's like the worst thing you can tell an engineer. It's not even but... that. I feel like if if three million people listen to your music, yeah. what's the probability that all three million people got good sound? Yeah, yeah. That's like at least yeah. you're talking about 500,000, a million of those people are just yeah. going to be like yeah. that. Yeah. So it got to sound nice. So, I mean, different places. Different places. But I'm happy that, you know, me being an engineer, not only for me, mm. from an artist, mm. for the artists I work with, mm. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I think you should do it like this, do it like this. It's, it's, ooh, it's, it's helped me, I say, 300%. Yeah, you're a complete artist, 360, no question about it. Your success is yours and no one else's, man. Respect to you. It's great to finally meet you. You too, man. Yeah, dude. Do you have a place where you can listen to music away from being Davido? where it's just yours. Like I have a spot in my garden that I go away and what I choose to play in that spot mm -hmm. has nothing to do with this. And I love putting music through yeah. the filter of this, but I'll play stuff that I may never play on my radio show or talk about, but I just love it. Yo, so funny. I concentrate the most on the plane. Yeah. I don't know. Distraction free. I, I don't join no Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I put my headphones in I just, and I just go through records and I yeah. just really listen Yeah, that's when I'm really tapped out like you yeah. know what I'm saying that's one place I really focus. I get it my friends are always like oh you know you gotta get on the Wi-Fi I'm like no it's the one place I refuse to get on the Wi-Fi yeah like you know what I'm saying <laughs> I like that um, but I, I definitely love when it comes to um, recording yeah. and curating records I love being at home in mm -hmm. Lagos mm -hmm. like I record even if I, the, even if I record in the studio out here or in mm. Atlanta, um, the idea is always from, I always bring it from Lagos. Yeah, I was speaking to someone about Lagos the other day, a few months back, um, who's, who's, who grew up there, talking about the similar energy between um, certain big metropolitan, city, metropolis, metro, metropolitan cities and Lagos and how it has a similar like, feel. Like, like New York? Like New York, yeah. Yeah, like New York. Okay, I see these are cities I can, that I've been to that I can say, you know, New York, I haven't been to Tokyo, but somewhere like Tokyo, yeah, um, London definitely, yeah, um, Kingston, yeah, you no know, Kingston, yeah, um, you know Lagos is very very fast paced, and and the noises right, the sounds, the horns, the the, the music here, the horns there, the conversations the are loud, everyone's trying to cut through, and everything is in Lagos. Yeah. You have the parts in Lagos where it's like it looked like Miami, mm. you got the parts in Lagos where it looked like, you know what I'm saying. So everything is in Lagos. That's, that city is like a whole country in one kind of. Mm. And if I say this every time. If you can survive in Lagos, mm. you can survive anywhere in the world. I I'm must visit. You, I must visit before, before the, my the, time on this, the, on this the earth vibe, is done. The vibe in Lagos, musically for yeah, me, yeah. that's where I go back. And, you know, and it's, it's also called tapping in with the, you know, with, the, with the streets. You know, we travel so much. You know, we're touring. You know what I'm saying? We never really get time to be at home. Yeah. So every time I get home, I'm so excited. I'm like, yeah. What's moving? What's good? What's going on? I'm I'm going I'm going to the airport. I'm taking a shower. I'm going to the studio, and then I'm just listening. I might not even be listening to my records. All my boys out there, like, let me hear what you guys have been doing. And mm. it's just like, you know, what I'm saying, no matter the level you attain, you always need that fresh air and stuff like that. You never stop learning. That said, how do you move out there? Because as someone who now has been so instrumental and influential yeah. in helping to further define the sound and yeah. feeling of that community on the world stage, yeah. that comes with a lot of responsibility. Now, it's your home, so you can define to some degree how you shape and move out there. Mm -hmm. but how do you move out there? Is it, is it changed for you? It's, 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 recently, it's, it's, it's changed. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I've always been that artist that, you know what I'm saying, I want to be at home. I'm trying to be home, except I'm like touring. Yeah. But with this Timeless album, I put so much into it and it came with so much emotion because, you know, I was, I was on my, I didn't, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I was out for like six, seven months, you know what I'm saying? With my family. So I had time to really, this is the first project where it was like, normally we in the studio with like 50 people. You know what I'm saying? You know how it is, drinking over here, smoking over here, yeah. partying. That's how it's always been. Even the type of music I make, if you listen to it from the, from back it's party music it's pop 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 but this with this record it was me one on one with the producer you were going through something else yeah. I, I feel like 
this album feels like a healing to me. Yes, me and the engineer. You know what I'm saying? The only, the only, because I, I actually recorded most of this album in my house where I live with my wife. So it was really only me, her, and her sisters at the time. And then I had like one of my boys staying with me. But it, it gave me time to really calm down. And yeah, it was a healing process because, you know what I'm saying? I, w- I was happy that, oh, I'm waking up today. I'm making music today. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited. Like, Isn't it amazing that when, when you sort of... You, when you get to a point in your life, you've already achieved a certain amount of success and music has a purpose for you. But you, do, but you discover a new purpose. It comes along and it provides you with something you didn't even know that you needed. It felt, it different. Felt, it felt like I was just an artist that just got signed and just given the opportunity to show what he can do with this record. So, like, I was really, really excited about it. Like, I used to wake up. I remember sometimes I'd be tired. So what I used to do is that I'd play because I was, I was in the gym. Um, so I played the album from, not actually the album, like the songs that I had made for the album. I played, it was like 28 songs after we'd like kind of trickled it down. So I'd play the album from 1 to 28. So the whole time I'm gymming, I'm happy. It's new music. I'm already imagining, you know, I was, I'm, I'm really imagining how people going to react to it. I'm imagining, I was like a little kid. And I've been doing this for 12 years and it felt like, this is the first time I ever gonna drop music. This is the first time I'm about to go back on the road. It's, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted the music to be so good because I already knew, like, yeah, me coming back, you know, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, were really, really expecting the album. But I wanted, to, I didn't want to just come out and be like, yeah, you know, he's been through a lot. We're going to support him. Nah. I didn't want that. I knew it was going to come anyway. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to I really wanted to let them know, like, yo, this boy got it, got it. Like, we know he got it. You know what I'm saying? It feels like an event. It so, felt like an event when you press play on it. Yeah, so, like I was saying in the gym, I'd play it, play it, play it. And we finally picked the songs, and everything just came together. Everything would just come together, even with the ideas. Um, I I signed two new artists at the time that I was working with, Morave and Logos. They're on the album as well. She, she drops, I think, this month or next month. Um, so I was excited about a lot. I'll go to Morave and she's on track three in the garden. So I'd wake up, you know what I'm saying? Because this is like two months till I got to turn in my album. So I'm kind of, le- I wasn't, I didn't leave the house for like seven months. So I'm kind of like leaving the house a bit, you know what I'm saying? Going to the studio and back. Coming home early, but you know what I'm saying? Still stepping out and just watching her record. She gave me inspiration like to like, yo. You know what I'm saying? New, fresh music. Um, I worked with new producers. You know what I'm saying? There was, you know, so everything was just new to me. I was, like I said, I felt like a kid in the candy store. And then a lot of the ideas that we, you know, had previously, you know, before, you know, what happened that was meant to do, we just scrapped everything. We just got new, fresh ideas. I was like, I remember when we were doing the cover for Timeless, I was like, yo, what's... This timeless music, yeah, it's gonna have something to do with time, but also I want to uh, uh, also represent patience. So that's how I thought of the hourglass. You know what I'm saying? Hourglass, um, then um, scenery, like jungle scenery. Yeah, the largest moon you've ever seen over the mountain with the sky that seems to go on forever. Yes, mountain. And if you look really close on the album, it's like a bird, and that signifies like my son, because he loved. Like jungle scenery, he loved, you know what I'm saying? So um, so the album means a lot, you know what I'm saying? So with the with the timeless, I want to wake up in 30 years, 35 years, and bump it and put it in. And, and it feels like it's the first time that I'm listening to it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just happy, man. Everything came together. Um, like I said, I've always been having fun with music. And I think this is like the first time I think my people sat me down, like, yo. D, you work too hard, man. Like, of course, you've made, you've always made classic music, but this time, let's do it right. Well, the thing about having fun, like, it should be fun when you start, and the idea being that um, you are... It should be fun, but, you know, you asked me that question about how I moved back home. You know what I'm saying? Like, the regular me, I'd be home right now. I'd be like, yo, can we do this on Zoom? <laughs> but I'm saying, like, now it's like we have a... Not only me, even my colleagues, we have a a mission. We're mm. like ambassadors now. Mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? We're ambassadors to 
the culture. Now, they're like, yo, y'all fly, go out there and change the, nar- to change the narrative. You know what I'm saying? So when we go home, it's now a thing of, yo, man, I love when people come up to me and be like, yo, thank you, man. You guys, you guys don't know what you guys are doing for us. Like, I, I met somebody in the airport. He was like, he grew up in America. And years ago, the narrative of being African was not as cool as it is now. Thank you. Now we're proud. They, they can ask us, where are you from? And I'll say I'm from Nigeria. And they're like, oh, I love Nigerian music, man. Or they're like, oh, I love Nigerian food, man. So it's different from years ago where, you know what I'm saying, people weren't really proud to say where they was from. It's a really heady combination because you're motivated to want to go out there and be your truest self. You gain success in a very unfiltered, very honest way. There is a period of time, generally speaking, where it's hard for people to process that success because it just reminds them that they're back home and you're over here. Yeah. So it's a real tipping point when they feel that energy come back. Yes. Right? That's a big moment. And funny because I started from... And that's I, around the world. That's that's across the board. I, I started from here. I would say started from here because, you know, I grew up in Nigeria. But musically, when I really decided that, okay, I want to be an artist full time was when I was in Alabama, in America. It could have been so different, right? You could have gone yeah. down the Western music route. No, and... we did at first. Yeah. Me and my cousins, I remember we used to be in Atlanta. Like I told you, I used to be an engineer. So he had a friend that rapped. His name was Jam Rock. And then... um. Jam rock, she know, be red. So I used to, I was good on the um, self talk. I taught myself how to record from YouTube. I just bought my laptop, I put the logic in. Then it was like logic two or logic three. Yeah. And then I taught myself how to work everything. So I used to record. I go to the hood. Cause my cousin used to live in the hood. I go to the hood and I record them. And then, yeah, from there, but it was like Western music. Like then it was like hip hop, Travis Porter type stuff. But then I took one trip. Back home for Christmas. Christmas is the best time to come. It's festive period, all the entertainment shows, boos, crazy, fireworks every day, food, 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 <laughs> party, 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 drink, 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 drink. Yeah. Um. So I I went back home for like two three weeks, and obviously I haven't been home in like two years. Then I I, I then I I noticed that, yo, it's popping. Like, the shows like before I left. Nobody would buy a show to like a Nigerian artist show, except that like there was an American artist on it, like Usher. Like we've had Chris Brown come previously. We've had Fifty Cent, Ja Rule, name it, Shaggy, or anybody. Um, but when I got back years later, it changed. They wasn't playing Western music anymore. Yeah, the radio was playing all Nigerian music. The shows were booking all Nigerian artists. Crazy shows. That's when like Debanj, Two Face, P Squared, and they started going crazy. Like coming to America, make hundred thousand dollars a show type. So I'm looking like, boy, I'm about to switch because I'm like, this is really what I want. This is this is really where I'm from. You felt the pull. At that point, I didn't even know if I could even make. African music. Yeah, because it, what a str- what, what an interesting way to come about it. You've got this momentum going out here, even at a young age, on this side of the world. Yeah. And you're like, but well, my heart's over here. Can I actually break it over here? Yeah. So I, that trip, I was looking, I was like, yeah. But I just had to believe. You know what I'm saying? So when I came back to America, I started now experimenting more on Afro stuff. You know what I'm saying? Recording. I met Akon. That's, this is... This is, I'm talking about, I'm like 14. You know what I'm saying? So so from there, I just started being more on the Afro stuff. And then I had a cousin that was doing Afro music in Nigeria. His name is MPZ. So me and him just linked up over Facebook. And I used to start, then I started making beats like that sounding like Afro. And it was sounding pretty good. So I'd send him the beats, he'd write to it. I, I'd write some stuff too for him. He records it. And then we thought we was going to be like the, the artist producer duo, like by the takeover of the world. And then from there, I just went back again to Nigeria and full tapped in. Didn't want to leave. Didn't want to leave ever. Yeah. Home. Home. home definitely. Came home. Came home straight. Did you feel like you had road to cover when you got back there in terms of really making uh, a name for yourself, establishing your voice, given that you were coming back? 
Yes, definitely. I am. If you listen to my earlier records, even like way, 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 way before they even dropped, I, I could see the transition. I could see me, you know, it kind of started off like Afro R and B ish, because I still wanted to sound a little bit westernized. You know what I'm saying? And then over time, it kind of like grew to this big cultural Yoruba speaking. <laughs> Like, it, then I was like, you know, got tapped in. And I felt like it was always in me, but I just needed something to bring it out. What's interesting, because your confidence instilled even more confidence in the artistic community to be true to themselves, which then instilled more confidence in you to go even further. And now, to your point, there's no question. But then check this. Check this. I don't want to leave the Western world out. I did, i say a lot of my confidence came from, like, being this side you know what i'm saying like even the way like i remember me and my cousins you know how i was in america like how you had like um g unit how you had like cash money um it was only like the bonds really doing it like bringing the whole crew back so when we was going back we was like yo we fresh we got a little paper you know what i'm saying we got to kind of fake it till we make it so we we went back acting like with the yeah, we went back and like we lit. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we used to buy them chains middle of the mall. Yeah. Four hundred dollars. We was icy back home. It was real. So we go home. We you know then we used to wear like it was supers that was ready to go back home with the new J's. We'd be fresh. And I had two two of my cousins. They was light skin. And back then in Nigeria, all the girls loved the light skin. Mix. So I was like, yo, y'all, y'all stand. You stand here. You stand here. <laughs> my older brother, my older brother Chaman. He was like the boss. He was big, you know what I'm saying? So we 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 gave him the title. He was the boss, you know what I'm saying? And then we had other people. So like we came in like, you know what I'm saying? But then we had the music. Yeah. But then we had the look. We had everything else. But then I, as everybody was doing that, I was focused. Yeah, what's the, where's the music? Then I, I was focused doing the music. And then what I do is because I knew I couldn't be at the forefront because my my family wouldn't kind of let me at the time. I had to record songs and have my cousin just sing it. Or my cousin or my other cousin just sing it. They had you prioritizing other things. Yeah. Mm. It's cool. Mm. So one day, one of my cousins, Be Ready, came up to me. He was like, yo, I ain't going to lie. You sound better than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> like Powerful truth. And, and <laughs> important to, look, important imagine, point. But listen, imagine we've been recording. Could have been for, very different. You know what I told him? I said, we've been recording for three years. <laughs> now you tell me? And you wait till now to tell me I sound better than everybody. Uh, it was so cool. Uh, but then great. I was like, so what you t so what you saying? Yeah. He was like, drop a record and let's see. I was like, all right, what I got to lose? So I dropped a record, dropped it on Facebook at the time. And then it went crazy. The comments went crazy. Like, yo, you sound good. But then I started having verses on their songs. And then before you knew it, I just did my own song. You know, you mentioned Akon before, man. You kind of, you know, cast your mind back to you being a teenager and being around Akon yeah. and how influential and enormously important Akon's role in all of this has been in terms of connecting the dots. Even just back home, like the people that really opened my eyes, I was like, yo, Akon, of course, you know, but Akon was still. You know, we knew he was African and he used to definitely come back home for shows. I'm talking about an artist that we saw in, in Nigeria grow up with us and take over the world. My first vision of that was the Banj, Oliver Twist. Yeah, smash. Bro. Smash. I remember I was just in the house with them and then I think I had to go to Dubai with my family and then I'm watching YouTube. I'm like, this Kanye West in the video? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was my first, that was like, that was one, and then, then before you know it, P-Square got a song with Rick Ross. Like, like what? Two-Face got a song, multiple songs with White Clef, with, with T-Pain. We like, yo, what's going Anything's on? Anything's possible now. Yo, what's going on? Yeah. So then, then it became serious for me. Like, nothing else mattered again. And then we just faced it full time. But you make a really interesting point given what's about to occur on November the 18th and this acronym when given its full respect 
Are We African Yet? yet. Away, right? Yeah. A-W-A-Y. Really powerful acronym, really powerful statement. It's like, I, well, I, I, I want to ask you, given that you gave us such a beautiful retelling of the journey from kind of developing your identity through the Western filter, mm -hmm. discovering your true purpose back home in Lagos, yeah, and now realizing that in, in, in 2023, you, you're asking an important question. Are we African yet? Mm. It means a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we're enjoying the music. Yes, we're enjoying the culture. But do you really understand? That day we're going to celebrate, definitely. We're going to celebrate. We're going to eat. We're going to dance. But I also want to also give awareness of things that, you know what I'm saying, are really going to have that really happening. I feel like the, the synergy of, you know, the Western world and Africa is getting closer day by day. You know what I'm saying? And we think things like entertainment. You know what I'm saying? But entertainment to me is, it's like a, how will I say it? It's like a... A Trojan horse, almost. It's like, hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. look at us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it definitely can be seen as a distraction yeah. after a while, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things that's still happening back home that, you know, people don't know. And I think that day, apart from, you know what I'm saying, music and stuff, I'd like for some people to come do some poetry. You know what I'm saying? Talk about you know, things that happen back home. I definitely want to raise some money that day. Um, I raise money every year for um, motherless babies' homes. Um, I've done it twice. I did it earlier this year, and I did it a uh, year before my for my birthday. We raised about, I think, $500,000, and we spread it through all the motherless babies' homes in Nigeria. You know, food. Um, earlier this year, we did the same thing. Um, and in, at the show, I definitely want to, you know, just raise awareness as well. So are we African yet? Yeah, it's not about, you know, wearing the clothes, eating the food. We want you guys to come home, visit, come, come and invest. And, and, and again, it's the way it, it's happening. Years ago, for example, Chance the Rapper just did a festival in Ghana. You know what I'm saying? So years ago, it was the other way around where it's like the same way they, you know, we have people like in the, we have people coming to Africa, which we love, investing, you know, you know, bringing their own culture over there, you know, having festivals. It's the same way we should do the same over here, you know, and that's why I'm having this festival that's going to be coming every year. Yeah, in Atlanta, where you sp where you got hours on the road, crazy, and the, the, years on the, the road. The, the, the arena, I pass, I used to, I pump, I've been passing that arena since I was a kid. This is powerful. You know what I'm saying? And if it, if across the arena, there's actually a bridge. And it just always reminds me of that bridge of like back home. And and then why why I also want to do this is because I'll be, when I go out in America, just for example, and I go out and I hear a song that I'm like, ah, this, this is an African song. I'm excited. I'm telling my friends, like, yo, this is a young guy that's coming up. And I hit the young guy. This is just an example. I'm like, yo, I was in the club last night. They played your song. And he was like, no way. So that those type of people, I want to give opportunity to come every every year, different times, to come and perform. You know what I'm saying? Um, for the for the for the, cause they have fans here and they mm -hmm. don't know, cause you know internet. All you gotta do is just drop a song now, on TikTok or, and it's gone. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, a billion miles away, it could be their best song and you wouldn't even know. Well, that's the that's the, that's the gift and the rub, right? The gift is that you can reach anyone anywhere with your music now there's limitless boundaries really mm -hmm. given the way that it, it's distributed and shared but yeah that means that it's harder to hold somebody with something unless you are investing significant resources and time into telling the story which and is what this yes. is and also another reason is i feel like we got to own our culture too you know what i'm saying um we can't wait for somebody to bring the idea and be like yo afrobeats is growing Let's go register African Coachella or something like that. I'm like, no, we got to do this ourselves, you know, because this is ours. So we got to own it. Down the line, if somebody want to partner with me, I'm like, yo. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm a businessman. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? But it's something that everybody, should, I'm from Atlanta, so I, this is what I, this is my gift. This is my gift. This is a bragging right to uh, uh, Africans in Georgia or in the South of Georgia because a lot of people coming from the South. 
I'm coming in for the show. But um, this is my gift every year. Sometimes, some like sometimes I might not even perform. It might be somebody else headlining. You say that. Everybody puts on the Rim Festival uh, says that. You think, for real? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> does. You and then after they're like, nah, fuck come out. Come on, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. You've got me hanging off every word and that's where the spell is broken. You're like, uh, I might not even perform at my own festival. Nobody's come done on. that. That's the point. I mean, it's the, not the bigger point, but it's kind of the point. you got to show up to your own party, man. you got to. I think sometimes Jay-Z don't perform Made in America. I asked one example. Nicely played. Yeah, so I'm not saying now. I might do the next five. I might do the next five. But, I, four. but can I counter that? I bet, I bet secretly he really wants to. <laughs> <Jay -Z>. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you really put him through the, the LD test, he'd be like, <laughs> okay, I do yeah, kind of yeah, want to play my main yeah. event. I mean, I, I think it's, I, I totally get your point. It's not about, a, it's not a Davido show. It's not, it's not no, about this, being, it's not about being. No, this first one is kind of, because it's, it's part of the timeless tour. But it's not, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Will you tell me? I mean, to me, it. But I, it, it's the, the 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 vision I have. I'm talking ten years, twenty years down the line. The vision I have is created to be something that it's for the culture, not particularly mine. I might be, might be behind it, producing it. You know, what I'm saying all of that, but it's something I'm doing for the culture. Which you know, will you move it around? I mean, could yes, be, we yeah. we we spoke about that. You know, what I'm saying Atlanta definitely gonna have the first couple, but we've spoken about definitely moving it around because we everywhere. So definitely, I can see maybe LA. I can see, I can see, I can see Toronto. Definitely, I think it's amazing. And and I so mean, we're definitely gonna move it around. Definitely. As a music fan um, who loves the music and is just here to learn the stories that go into it, where it comes from, I think this is a huge part, huge chapter in in that story. I think, yeah. like like you said, bringing the the live experience into America to the city. That could have easily been your home. You could have rejected the call. Of course. Life could have been very different. Thank God I picked up. Picked up. I remember when I was going home too, my boy was like, man, you, you stupid, man. You gonna really... Yeah, why, why, you, why, why aren't you... Why? I text that nigga like six years after. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. Did you really? Yeah, I hit him up. <laughs> I was like, what you say? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you did that. You did you, that. You keep the receipts. Did that. Did that. <laughs> Six there was years. another girl I used to have a crush on in school. Oh my god! How many receipts nah, have you nah, got in your nah, pocket, this, bro? This one was like, wasn't even. I didn't even plan this. So, um, yeah. So I got this. I got this uh, endorsement from this big phone company, like a big phone company. The money was so much that I literally had to like go to the office and see the boss, sign it, get the check. So they're like, yeah, go to the accounts department. So I'm like, all right, cool. But guess who's handing me the check, bro? Nah. She's like the teller in the... Nah. Did you say anything? <laughs> Didn't even have to. Now I said that. I was like, oh. I feel bad for this lady. No, I was like, come around, come around, come around. Come around, give me, what? I was like, How have you been? But then in the car, I was like, <laughs> I told my guy, because he went to school with me. I was like, you know who that was, right? He's like, that was <laughs> You're a savage. <laughs> no, but it was all cool. It was nice. It was nice. Yeah, for you. <laughs> what do you listen to? What What is outside of your sort of... Yeah, what do you love? What, like, Funny what... enough, I don't be... I be listening to rap. <laughs> but apart from like Afro beats, I listen to like a lot of like Southern rap. You know what I'm saying? Baby, uh, Moneybag Yo, 21. Do you spend much time in Atlanta? Yeah, I'd say I do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I yeah. say I do. I so do you roll in that? Like, do you do you stay connected with who's moving and making music out there? Oh, definitely, man. Baby's my guy, man. When we have time, we link up. Thugs. I was really, really close with Thug. Like we used to like, like he was one of the first to kind of acknowledge me. Like just chilling, not even like on no music stuff. Just like, just as a human, just being. as a human being. So where do we go now, man? This festival. You're on this tour. It's it's like a triumphant stop on this tour to. To continue to bring this album, you're very passionate about Timeless. Definitely. More videos. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just dropped Phil video. What's the one song on this album that that you listen, when you listen back to this record, what's the one song on this album that you think is a signpost to where you can go next? Where did you really push yourself? Do you feel mm. like thematically, emotionally, performance-wise on this record? I think all the records, but I think one record that, um, that I kind of 
I want to say challenge myself because it wasn't really like a challenge, but I kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like, you know, went out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Was the record with Angela Kijo and the Caveman. I love that track. Yeah, which is, I think that's the record coming out next. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. It's got a toughness to it too. You know what I'm saying? Because I've always loved the Caveman music and definitely loved Mama's music. And I just wanted to do something where people would just be like, yo. Like, when it drops, it's immediately. We are the sound killer. Yeah, you know, that that comes on in any room with any volume and anybody in it. And uh, that's a movement. That's a movement record right there. Yes, yes. So um, I think musically, we're, I want to say I'm going to, but the next record that we're doing, the next album, I'm definitely going to be experimenting. You know what I'm saying? By the way, you got to get it in because you're about to, twins. Twins! Ooh, come on, man. I got to, now I got to, yeah, man, everything going up. Um, Yeah, man, touring. I love touring. It's it's my be it's the best part of being a, an artist to me. You know what I'm saying? Apart from obviously recording music, but I love touring. I love being on the road. And now it's just so much complicated. So much com it's so much more complication. Let me tell you why. Why? So now, for example, let's just say calculate five years ago, I do uh a, a five thousand, six thousand venue. What does that require? Okay, how is the stage gonna cost you forty thousand plus sound and blah, 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 blah. right now? <sighs> yeah, man, you gotta justify the ticket price. You got people coming in twenty thousand, thirty thousand people coming in at a pop. Yo, yep. we did. I remember we did, we did DC. And I, th I think we walked out with like one point one, right? And mm -hmm. then like half. Oh yeah. Back in. Five moose. Back in. This is the thing that the people listening to this and watching this right now they, they don't they don't realize and and it shouldn't stop you from wanting to do it by the way like no 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 right it, I'm like we doing it yeah if if you're like oh what there's no money in music and that's a shock to you get off the bus like, yeah. okay you shouldn't be making music like that that's not why you do it it comes from the passion and the delivery and the creativity but eventually you know, know everything's on at balance up but you know what I'm saying I'm just you know when especially us that's we kind of the genre is kind of walking into this new realm. That's what I mean. This is your moment right now to really reach as many people as possible and it requires investment. Yes. So when, and funny enough, my my generation, we might not be the one that's going to mostly benefit from all we're doing now. It's the same way we're, re we're enjoying the hard work of our predecessors. You know what I'm saying? That they invested, that traveled, that toured. Yes. And that we can do it on a bigger scale. Yes. And some some other people gonna come and do it on a much bigger scale than us. You know what I'm saying? But the beauty is the hunger. Because if that hunger is not there, you know what I'm saying? Imagine me not doing no production, just put a backdrop, a DJ, and I go home. At least I got one point one million dollars yeah. in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. No, it's, it's the, the, the experience is shit. It's a short road. You know what I'm saying? It's a short road. And you, then, you know where the dead end yeah, is. Yeah, right now, if I go back, go back to D.C., I put three days on a date. I spend, what, one million? I walk home and what, two? Yeah, but not just that, man. You also know that at the end of the day, bro, like music will... The, how do I put this? There's a corridor that seems to go on forever and everyone gets a, a room yeah. with their name on the door. Yeah. And the thing that unlocks your room in that corridor is your music. Yeah. What are you going to put in your room? Are you just going to put a couple of songs and a few videos and a couple of tour posters? Or are you going to put businesses, mm. investments, record labels, directing other things, doing other things, you know, like... Executive producing 100%. The greats have a stacked room. Mm. That's, you know, that's that's the game. Crazy. The game isn't just about the 1.1 no. versus 5.5. 5. 5. You know, 5.5... Hmm. Five hundred five hundred thousand. I can't do math. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. We definitely like our. I, I, I tweeted the other day because um, the movie, the uh, the film, the film industry in Africa is getting really, really big now. Amazing, like the the quality of stuff they're doing is like mind blowing. So I watched, and when I went home last week, I watched a couple uh stuff from back home, and I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm about to invest in one of these. I was gonna say, executive producing that stuff. Yeah. What about on screen? I can. I, you can. I can, can but um, for now, no. But um, I really want to, you know, be behind the scenes. Um, since I tweeted it, I've gotten some, some scripts. You know what I'm saying? Some real solid scripts. So I really want to invest in one of those as well. Mm. Um, we need another timeless though, man. Not literally, but like, it just feels like you. This album, and you said it. 
I I hear it, but you said it. It it music is something different to you than now. It's mm -hmm. not that game that you get to play and have fun with, and like you say, the accidental success. Like yeah. now, it's like mm, making real bodies of work. That, and and the, the the good thing about timeless is that even when I listen to it, and when I listen to the songs that didn't make it, I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> So it's not even about, I know like we, we recorded 60, 70 songs for Timeless. Yeah. So I'm not even worried about getting records out. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I got records that didn't make Timeless, they're better than the records on Timeless. I mean, I'm glad we got a chance to hang out and talk. So, I mean, you know, it, it's it's been a really amazing hour just kicking it and getting the story up to now. And I feel like next time, if if we get a chance and God willing. Um, next time, I want you to come to yeah. Mount to Lagos. Yeah. Well, let's leave it here then with this question. What? is the memory that really reminds you of that place? Um, December. We, we used to go um, every December before New Year's. So I, I, I this, this, it still happens every time. We drive in, because my dad has like a big, nice um, resort, ranch type mm. stuff. And we drive in, we see the cows. And we looking at them cows like, ooh, we about to... <laughs> You know, see, so you see the cows. Evolution. You smell, you know what I'm saying, jollof rice. Mm. You're smelling the chicken. You're smelling the stew. You're hearing the music, drunk. You know what I'm saying? Um, just that experience and going back every year and it just feeling the same till date. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm. And they just sing and dance. People come. They play music for you. You're meant to give them money. You give them money, they go for one hour, they come back. You're like, yo, I just gave you money. Like, we want, we want more. <laughs>